Far beneath the frozen soil of Siberia, inside a cave half swallowed by darkness, a scientist brushed away the dust from something no larger than a fingernail. A single bone, pale and silent, yet it carried a secret that would change how we see ourselves. When its DNA was read, it spoke not of Neanderthals nor of modern humans, but of another people, long forgotten, long unseen, the Denisovans. From that one fragment, a new branch of humanity emerged. A sister lineage that once walked beside our ancestors, hunted in the same forests, saw the same stars, and then vanished, leaving behind only whispers in our blood. About 65,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began to leave Africa. They followed rivers through the Levant, entering new lands already home to another kind of human, the Neanderthals. Neanderthals had lived across Europe and Western Asia for hundreds of thousands of years. They were skilled toolmakers and hunters, adapted to harsh Ice Age climates. In the Levant, the first meetings between modern humans and Neanderthals began. By 60,000 years ago, both species shared the same landscapes, sometimes competing, sometimes exchanging tools, ideas and genes. From there, humans moved north into Anatolia, a region linking Africa, Asia and Europe. Anatolia was more than a crossing point. It was a place of contact. Here, early humans and Neanderthals likely lived side by side for thousands of years. Archaeological and genetic clues suggest that some of the first genetic mixing outside Africa may have taken place on this land. From Anatolia, one branch of humanity moved west into Europe. There, Neanderthals slowly disappeared by around 40,000 years ago. Their extinction was likely caused by several factors, a changing climate, declining populations, and competition with modern humans. Yet part of them survived through us, carried quietly within our DNA. Another branch of humans went east, across Iran, Central Asia, and into the high plateaus of Siberia. Around 50,000 years ago, they met another branch of humanity, the Denisovans, close relatives of Neanderthals, who had adapted to life in colder and higher regions of Asia. Later, humans met Denisovans again in Tibet and Southeast Asia, where their genetic legacy helped modern humans adapt to new environments and survive. By 45,000 years ago, Homo sapiens had reached Europe, Siberia and Australia. But the signs of those early encounters in the Levant, in Anatolia and across Asia remained. Most people outside Africa carry about 2% Neanderthal DNA, but in the islands of Southeast Asia, in New Guinea and across Australia, some carry 4 to 6% Denisovan ancestry, the highest archaic imprint on Earth. It means the Denisovans were not ghosts of the North. They were neighbors of the tropics, thriving beneath the monsoon skies of Indonesia and beyond. Yet bones tell us almost nothing of them. Only fragments, a tooth, a jaw, a finger. So where did the rest of their story go? Archaeologists look southward to Java's Ngandong River, where 12 skulls rest in the mud, rounded, large-brained, neither fully ancient nor fully modern. Too advanced for Homo erectus, too early for sapiens. Perhaps these are the faces of the Denisovans who met our ancestors and left their signature in our DNA. The disappearance of the Denisovans did not mark a complete end. Parts of them continue to live within us, 
influencing how our bodies function today. Modern genetic research has shown that their DNA still plays a role in our ability to survive and adapt to certain environments. In the highlands of Tibet, for example, many people carry a gene called EPAS1, which helps the body use oxygen more efficiently in thin air. This genetic advantage is believed to have come from Denisovan ancestors. It allows Tibetans to live and work comfortably at altitudes that would cause serious oxygen deprivation for most other populations. Other traces of Denisovan DNA are found in northern populations, where segments near the TBX15 and WARS2 genes influence how the body regulates heat and stores fat. These genes help people withstand cold climates by managing body temperature and energy reserves more effectively. Traits that were likely vital for survival in the freezing environments of Ice Age Asia. Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA also affect our immune systems. Some inherited gene variants help the body recognize and fight off new bacteria and viruses, offering protection that ancient humans might not have had on their own. However, these same genetic changes can sometimes increase the risk of inflammation and autoimmune conditions, showing how evolution's advantages can have trade-offs. Each of these examples reveals that the Denisovans never completely disappeared. Their genes became part of us, shaping how modern humans respond to altitude, temperature and disease. Even though they are gone as a people, their biological influence continues, embedded in the human genome. The Denisovans may be gone, but their story didn't end in that Siberian cave. It continues in us, in the way we breathe, adapt, and survive. Every heartbeat carries a memory of them and of all the others who came before. If you've been following this journey and want to go deeper into the DNA of nations and the great historical events that shaped who we are, there's much more waiting for you. Watch our other documentaries here on the History Hub. Discover how Neanderthal blood still flows through millions today. How ancient farmers from Anatolia built the genetic foundation of Europe. How the first Americans carried echoes of Siberia and beyond. Every video uncovers another layer of who we are, one strand at a time. So if you're curious about the hidden threads of human history, make sure to subscribe, explore the playlist, and keep the story going. Because the past isn't gone. It's alive inside us. In a minor we wander, traces in the soil. Ancient codes awakened by the rain sticks call. A world unseen unfolding, secrets to uncoil. of the tropics, voices on the breeze, a tooth, a jaw, a finger, shadows on the leaves, bamboo flute like memory, wind through silent trees, pulse of ancient heartbeat, guiding all we see. Faces in the mud rising in F major glow, reverence in every note, questions left below. Where did the rest of their story go?